Praise ye the Lord. Shall we bow down our heads again as we pray? Father, go with us as we continue in this worship and in this uh, message and speak to us exactly what you want us to hear. And at the end, let your name be praised. In Jesus' name, we pray. The danger of forsaking the gathering of brethren when you have the power to do so. Um, the, the last part of the message, I mean, of the topic was added because some people do not have the power to do so. For instance, those in the hospital do not have the power to come and gather. Um, I traveled about uh, two and a half hours from the church on Friday despite the storm, to go visit one of our members who is in another, another city. Um, he left us, but he decided that there's no way he can cut off from us. So he attends this church every Sunday, but it's not possible to be driving two hours and 40 minutes, two hours, 30 minutes to the church. But he pays his tithe into this church he partake in all our programs. And so I decided on Friday, despite the storm, because I already made up my mind, I'm going to visit him. So we, my protocols, they took me to the city where he lives, just to appreciate him, that you, you could not gather with us because you do not have the power to do so. So, but there is danger for those of us forsaking the gathering of brethren when you have the power to do so. The, James chapter 4 and verse 17, the New Living Translation, James 4 and verse 17. He said, remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. And every sinner will find themselves in the lake of fire. Remember, it's telling us to remember the message translation say, in fact, you know the right thing to do and don't do it that for you is evil. You know the right thing to do and you refuse to do it. You are a Christian, a born again Christian. You know the right thing to do. You refuse to do it. The Bible says it's evil. And if it is evil, you know where evil people will end their life. So in the book of Hebrew, which is our main text, Hebrew 10, 25 to 26, Hebrew 10, 25 to 26, he said, and let us not neglect the New Living Translation. Let us not neglect our meeting together. Question. As some people do because of COVID excuses, because of uh, internet provisions. He said, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. It means sitting down at home watching uh, weekly programs when you have the power to be in the church, going to work on Sunday and asking for more of it when you have the power to pray yourself out of that Sunday job is evil. So if you are listening to me at home and you have enjoyed so much internet worship, it is not according to the commandment of God. He said, dear friend, if we deliberately continue sinning after we have received knowledge of the truth, there's no longer any sacrifice that will cover our sin. If you continue to live in error, when Christ has labored and, and died for you, there's no longer any sacrifice needed for, to cover your sin. And the message translation says, not avoiding worshiping together, as some do, but spurring each other on, especially as we see the day of judgment approaching. So here we see that believers are commanded, we are commanded to assemble together for worship, for prayer meetings, to study God's word, and for ministry and witnessing. And failure to comply is rejecting the commandment of God. Some are not coming because of arrogance. They may say that they do not need the church, this church, 
because they are intellectually beyond the standard of the preaching. They, 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 they select whom they want to listen to. The environment is, no, 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 I can't train my children in that environment. Whereas there are people, missionaries, who are better than them, more intellectual than them, who are in Saudi Arabia, who are in, in Boko Haram uh, environment, who have the calling to, to say like Paul, for me to live is Christ to die again. They have a selective, when they come to a city, they selected where they can go. No, no, no. It's not where God wants them to go, but where they want to go. And mostly now, people now stay home and say, you know, I, I, I don't go to church. I watch it on the screen. So spiritual and intellectual arrogance is terrible. The wisest man is a fool in the sight of God. You are educated. You are very, very intelligent. But in the presence of God, you are a fool. And the strongest man is weak in the moment of temptation. When affliction comes, no matter how you feel you are rich, how you feel you are successful, the moment affliction comes, you, it will weaken you completely. So there's no man who can live the Christian life and neglect the fellowship of the church. You can't be overrich, over successful, over intellectual. To think that to sit down in the church with some people, to you, it will, it will reduce your personality. Why is it that in spite of our achievement and wealth, we find ourselves aimlessly wondering when we suddenly face challenges of life. When people face challenges like cancer, face challenges like, uh, I mean, terminal diseases, they find themselves aimlessly wondering, God, why? Why do I do this? Why will you do this to me? This is because some of us would have overcome those challenges, but our spiritual state is not conditioned to resist challenge. I mean, your spiritual composition, your content, your spiritual content is not conditioned to resist the challenge. There are some challenges that we could have overcome, but because pride, arrogance, false belief, distorted knowledge of the end time, has put some of us sitting down at home and we are so comfortable. There are two approaches to life. As I was studying this, speech, uh, this Bible uh, message for today. One, we often settle for a life of existence. I call it continued survivor. Leading to rat race. Go and study what rat race means. This is an unpleasant life of people who have jobs that require them to work very hard in order to compete with others. For money, they compete with others. For power, they compete with others for status. Instead of a life of substance, only few people pursue a life of substance. A life of substance is that of a purpose-driven. What is driving your motive is purpose, something you have received from God, which can only be achieved when we first master the art of consistent discipline, self-discipline, you can live a purpose-driven life without mastering the act of consistent self-discipline. Whereby we set our goals. What is the godly goals that you have set for your life, for your children? You set out time management. This is what God says I should do at this time. I got to get them done. And we set goals for parenting and relationships. As an inventor, Edison made 1,000 unsuccessful attempts at inventing the light bulb because it was being driven by purpose, a life of substance. So failing 1,000 times does not matter to him because what is motivating him was purpose. Our own daddy Gio moved into a jungle where snakes and dangerous animals reside to pursue a goal that has become the biggest religious city in the whole of Africa, if not the whole of the world. Because he, he knew how to define his life goals, prioritize his life goal, was not driven by the fantasy of what others are doing. 
So lack of godly inclined goal setting and time management is what made people to be comfortable sitting at home on Sundays. But I pray that the trouble that will come upon you that will force you to church will not come before you repent. You didn't say amen. amen. It was out of concern of the end time. End time destruction of the knowledge of the scripture. End time demonic manipulation that is causing people to feel comfortable doing the wrong thing. People will go to parties. They will spend money to go to parties. But when we talk about self-discipline to come to church, there is always an excuse. And the Bible commanded, do not forsake. The Israelites were commanded to observe the Sabbath, which we now do on Sundays. Deuteronomy 12, 4 to 5. Said, do not worship the Lord your God in the way these pagan people worship their girls. Rather, you must seek the Lord your God at the place of worship. He himself will choose from among all the tribe a place of worship, not your home, not on the internet. A place of worship that God has choose. The place where his name will be honored. Christ is coming soon. Sitting down at home doesn't add up to discipleship. It doesn't add up to you being... There is a book that says... Uh, uh, coming to church or something, uh, why do I come to church? The expectation of many people is that when you come to church, you come to receive. But when you come to the knowledge of Christ, you have come as an obligation to impart others. The church just becomes a seedbed to develop you so that you too can go and sow seed. That Deuteronomy 12, 4 to 5 message translation say, stay clear of those places. Don't let what went on there contaminate the worship of God. What went on? Several things are going on contaminate. Some people, they, they just decide they can't mingle with uh, some kind of people because they are now rich. And so they, they set up a mode of worship for themselves. You ask them, where do you worship? We're not worship in our homes. Not making any impact in the public. You have become a man saved with the blood of Jesus that has wasted the blood of Jesus upon your life. Instead, find the site that God, your God, will choose and mark it with his name as a common center for all the tribe of Israel. Find the site that God, your God, will choose and mark it with his name as a common center for all tribes. Exodus 20 and verse 8 to 10 says, Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Walk six days and do everything you need to do. But the seventh day is Sabbath to God, your God. Don't do any work. Not you, not your son, not your daughter, not your servant, not your maid, not your animals, not even the foreign guests. Some people will not come to church. Why do you? Oh, I have a visitor from outside the state. The day of judgment, there will be surprises. How we have dampened the grace of the blood of Jesus shed over our lives. You have a visitor outside the state. And so instead of bringing, here the Bible is saying, even your guest visiting you should be brought to the church. Following this commandment, guarantee your unbreakable joy lasting success and it guarantees that you will finish well isaiah 58 13 to 14 isaiah 58 13 to 14 new living translation said keep the sabbath day holy keep it holy keep the sabbath day holy keep it holy keep the sabbath day holy keep it holy keep the sabbath day holy amen Don't pursue your own interest on that day. Don't pursue your own interest. Many people go to church, they go to church like social gathering. 
they don't listen. They don't. They don't allow the Holy Spirit to tell them why you are coming to church. Is it because we are we are worshiping God in in a comfortable environment? Go and ask people in Saudi Arabia, even Morovia, not America. I was traveling on the air with uh, a Canadian when we were still living in Canada. And we, we moved together from Windsor to Toronto Airport on the same vehicle. Robert Q. Vehicle. And then we happened to sit down together inside the plane to Amsterdam. And we looked at each other and said, ah, we were together on, on, on this vehicle from Windsor. I said, yes. Then we started talking. What do you do for a living? I'm a missionary from Africa. He said, he said he's a missionary from Canada to um, is it Morocco or where? North America. And he said, they dare not know that you're a Christian in Morocco. There is a prison that is, that is slated, whether 15 or 20 years. If they see you preaching the scriptures. So what we did is that we set up an ophthalmologist those, uh, business where we check their eyes. Said, so underground when they come, we try to filter the word of God. They deliberately went there to North America from Canada. Because they had the burden for souls to be, to be saved. They took the risk to go there. And you, there is no risk of service here. All God wants you to do is wake up on Sunday, come and serve me. As you serve me, develop yourself to train or to bring other people so that we can depopulate the kingdom of hell and populate the kingdom of God. And you say no. Don't pursue your own interests on Sunday. But enjoy the Sabbath and speak of it with delight as the Lord only they speak of it to your children, speak of it to your family, speak of it to your friends. Honor the Sabbath in everything you do on that day and don't follow your own desire. Then the Lord will be your delight. So it means many people are on their own and they think they are Christians because the Lord is not their delight. He said, then I will give you great honor. Great honor, not honor you procure through your skill. I'm an engineer. I'm a doctor. I'm a nurse. I'm a business owner. That is your own honor based on your achievement. When God honors you, it's beyond your skill. And then satisfy you with the inheritance that I promise you. Not your skill. The danger of breaking this commandment is many. Look at some of the instances here. Many will be lovers of themselves. The moment you start breaking, start rationalizing the reason why uh, you can't come to church is my job. When have you come and said, Pastor, let's pray myself out of this job. It's causing enmity between me and God. Some people will have challenges with somebody. I was, I'm not coming to your church because uh, this person offended me. So, you know, when in some environment, they will cut their hands and they will say, Jesus, or you want the second hand to be cut. They will say, it's Jesus. They will cut the second hands. And I ask myself, are we going to the same heaven? There must be different type of heaven. There is heaven for those of you in America. And there is heaven for people who are laying down their life for the gospel. Philippians 2 and 21. Philippians 2, 21 message translation. So most people around here are looking out for themselves with little concern for the things of Jesus. They look out for themselves. And 2 Timothy 3, 2 says, as the end approaches, message translation, people are going to be self-absorbed. To be self-absorbed. Money hungry. Money, money, money. Oh, there was a day I was traveling uh, in, in the plane. I started studying the, the book of Ecclesiastes. And he said, a rich man, he got to a place, he said, a rich man died. And he did not know who spent the money he labored for. He said, vanity upon vanity. He now said, a poor man also died. And nobody cared about him because he was poor. He said, that is also vanity upon that. He said, both of them are the same. It doesn't matter how much you left behind. You don't know who will spend it. Money hungry. 
at the end of the days, we will be money hungry. Everybody is running after money. Self-promoting. I am this. I now moved to West Bloomfield. You know, I don't mix with people in Detroit. When we wanted to, to build this church, when I first took over 2002, one of the fights that those elders that I met were fighting me is that we can't build in Detroit. Detroit is a poor city. I said, uh-huh. So the gospel is only for rich people. We should go and buy a land in, in Southfield. This place, there are, there are poor people there. They will kill us here. And I said, God did not ask me to go and build a church in Southfield. This is where God has put us. And he's blessing us. He said, occupy till I come. If he does not give me 10,000 membership, I don't need it. The Bible says he gave one, one talent. He gave another one, five. Why would I be looking at the person he gave 10 talents? Who he gave 10, 10, 10 aircraft attached to the 10 talent. Gave university attached to the 10 talent. He gave uh, schools, buildings attached to the 10 talents. He gave me just one talent. And I will now drop it and say, I'm not satisfied with the 10 talent. Who decide what you get? Oftentimes when I don't make comparison, they think I am, I am, I am I'm timid. I don't know what I'm doing. But let anybody go start church in east of Detroit. The, all the anointing you have to say that we are not doing it well here. Go and start your own. He gave us one talent. Let's utilize the one talent appropriately. Let's occupy till it comes. What are you doing if you die today and he says, how much interest did you put on when I save you, save you? Some of you will go any length to do party. We are now party oriented, not God oriented, not, not, not her. And you see, the consequence of this is that when you, when, some of you, when you look at the scriptures, you overlook certain things. In Deuteronomy 28, 14 to 18, it's a dangerous scriptures. In the message translation here, it said, don't swap a niche to the right or left from the words that I command you. Today, by going or following or worshiping other gods and, you know, Yes, what will happen if you don't obediently listen to the voice of God, your God, and diligently keep all the commandments and guidelines that I'm commanding you today. See, all these curses will come upon you. May curses not come upon us. He said, curse. God curse to you in the city. God's curse in the country. God's curse on your basket and bread. God curse on your children. The corpse of your land, the young of your livestock, the cast of your so causes upon causes. If you just, if you just, so that, so when you are heaping off health, I mean, wealth upon wealth, money upon wealth, and God what is waiting for your money and say, oh, you forgot my Sabbath day. I commanded you to observe this. So the money you are building, you are building it upon something that is that a foundation that cannot be, that cannot survive. And so, should I resign from my Sunday job? No. I'm on that job, but my mind is not there. And so when Jesus comes and still meets me on that job, he knows I'm just there, my mind is not there. And I'm telling God every day, make a way for me. I want to serve you. Make a way for me. I want to serve you. Make a way for me. If he meets you, praying that prayer, that no, you were there because of survivor, life of existence. You have not yet got into the life of substance. You have not discovered your life of substance, a life of purpose. And you are waiting to discover a life of purpose that will make you serve the Lord. Then God search the heart. Our Jesus Christ, the Savior, was a perfect example to follow. In Luke chapter 4, verse 16, New Living Translation, say, when he came to the village of Nazareth, his boyhood home, he went as usual to the synagogue on Sunday and stood up to read the scripture. He was faithful in his worship of God and faithful to the church. Jesus, our Savior, was faithful to the church. 
Jesus' disciples also honor the church service. In Acts chapter 2, 44 to 46, the Bible says, and all the believers met together in one place, not in their home, watching the YouTube. No! Oh, that, that time there was no YouTube. But the Bible is our example. What are you doing at home? Whom are you influencing at home? God has saved you. We, we, how many people have you attempted to save after he saved you? All the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. They sold their property and possession and shared the money with those in need. <laughs> if you ask people to do it here, they won't come to church again. Everybody bring whatever you need. Let's call this, those who don't have, let, let's give it to them. In my first six months as a pastor of this church, so I traveled to Nigeria and I went to a city called Abekuta. And I said, they should give me this local address for all the workers. I want to tell them, I'm not here to look up to any one of you for sustenance. So, almost 50 workers. I loaded this clothes, this up and down clothes with the women. Loaded it from Nigeria. Within six months of being their pastor, I said, and the people who have left the workers for almost uh, a year came to say, me too, I'm a worker. Me too, I'm a worker. Because it's a free thing. But I made them realize that I'm not here to look up to any of you. God has conditioned my heart, conditioned my life to be able to come and do what he has called me to do. Not until you wake up, you will never make purpose. You will never be relevant in the kingdom until you discover that you were saved to serve. They worshiped together at the temple each day and met in homes for Lord's Supper. We asked our home cell uh, leader to preach here on Sunday so that every one of you will be meeting at home cell. Listen, I've started saying this little by little. I've started um, giving order little by little. A time will come. Pastor will not listen to you if you don't belong to us fellowship. I am not a charlatan. I am not a professional preacher. That when you have problems, you come and tell me, but I've been in this church for 20 years. You have to follow the doctrine of the church. So if you don't belong to house fellowship, you have naming, we won't come. You have to pass it through your house fellowship leader. You go to parties. You go to every, you are in a club. You are, in a, you are in a job. You obey the rules of the job. Why is it the rules of God that you will be violating? Here he said they worship together at the temple, met in home, house fellowship. Your training as a believer starts in your house fellowship. Sharing together our body starts in your house fellowship. Those who are afraid to talk to some sisters that they want to marry, they can come to the house fellowship. It's a more, a more small gathering where you would deliberately go and sit near the sister that you have been looking for in the church. And say, ah, you are not in this area. Why are you coming to our house fellowship? I am led. Oh, you can tell lies against sister. Peace. Why are you here? I have peace. They were together in the same place because they were of the same calling. If we are of the same calling, you should honor the calling. You can't be in the house of your father and become a bastard. Honor the calling. This is what we do in my father's house. Be part of your father's house. They have the same call, the same mind, and the same purpose. The people of the other religion, the Muslim. My grandmother was a Muslim. We were growing up as a Christian. My mother was a Christian. Because I stayed with my grandmother, he took us to the mosque. He took us to the mosque. Muslim prays five times a day. No matter if you are going to, to 
pay, give them a million dollars. If it is time to honor the five times prayer, they will say, can you wait for me? And you think they are not serving the right God. You are the one serving the right God that you are disrespected every day. Five times daily. But the most important prayer of their week is the Juma. Of the day of gathering, which is Friday. If you mess up on the day of Juma where they gather, they hear, we were in, in Turkey. We were in Turkey for a convention. This same Turkey that is having problem. We were there for a convention. They said, 50 redeemed pastors are here for convention. They stop us from meeting. The mayor sent to us and said, we are not comfortable with you. You can't meet. First day, they didn't allow us. Second day, they didn't allow us. The third day, they didn't allow us. It was the last day that we got an hotel that allowed us to do the Sunday service. Everywhere is marks. And when it is time to pray, they are there. The people of the world, they knew how to serve their God. When I was in Nigeria, living in a place called Kukumai Kwajangbadi, when we are doing our own night vigil, the people of the underworld, if you see the way they are doing their night vigil, you will would, you would know that the problem you are facing, you deserve it. They will boost. They will drink all sorts of things and we will be hearing them shouting like mad people in their own night vigil. These occult people. People are, they are peeing on your head in the midnight. And you are isolating yourself from where you can get power. When something not happened, we will not say it is some, uh, we, they, don't, they don't pray enough in that church. We have every platform for, for revival. Yesterday we met here for the tongues of fire. You will hear some testimony today. If you are, we met here, we started it last month. Testimonies are following. There is platforms for salvation, platform for testimony. The same church that you despise. During the COVID, we pay off 700000 without your money. I know some of you here who paid $300 last year. Are you not ashamed of yourself? In the church that you say is your father's house. So you want this church to die. Then you join the gossiper in the town and say, we told, we told, we told them they can't survive the, and they, they, they are doing something big. This is my father's house. It has to be big. I am not afraid to do anything big. And he has not disappointed me. But you are the one that is failing us. Because you make our God look as if he's not a God. You give priority to things that are worldly. Things that will not matter at the day of judgment. Gladness and blessedness. I, I, you know that last Sunday I was prophesying. Sunday before the last I was prophesying. Since I came back from my closet, I was prophesying. But I have a check. Tell them the truth. They love the prophecy. But prophecy will end up in this world. They love the prayers. But prayer will not see them to heaven. It is knowing the truth that will set them free. Gladness and blessedness I will soon run up comes from the desire to come to church. In Psalm 122 and verse 1, New Living Translation, 120, he said, I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. What makes you glad? Let's go to work. They give you a double shift. Or we end one day. One single sickness, we take that shift from you. I don't pray for you to have it. But be glad to come to the house of the Lord. God expects you here. When we say it's 10, let it be 10. When we say weekly service is 7 o'clock, let it change your schedule. Jesus will soon come. Psalm 84 verse 4. He said, blessed are they that dwell in your house. Blessed. They will be still praising. Blessed. Blessedness is the grace to prosper. Blessedness is the grace to live in peace. Blessedness is the grace uh, to, 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 to live in joy and happiness. Blessed are they that dwell in their house. And Psalm 84 tells say, One day spent in your house, this beautiful place of worship, message translation, beat thousand spent on my job, spent on parties, spent on gathering of friends, friends spent on Facebook. One day, there is safety in the house of God. Psalm 27 and verse 5. For he will conceive me there when trouble comes. He will hide me in his sanctuary. He will place me out of reach on high rock. 
Message translation, that's the only quiet, secure place in a noisy world. The only quiet, the only secure place is the church. Psalm 31 and verse 20 says, You hide them in the shelter of your presence, safe from those who conspire against them. The only place you are safe from the conspiracy of demons, principalities and power, conspiracy on your job, conspiracy in your father's house, mother's house, the only safe haven is the church. You hide them in the shelter of your presence, safe from those who conspire against them. The church is also an escape route. Psalm 71 and verse 2 to 3. Deliver me in thy righteousness. Psalm 71, 2 to 3. And cause me to escape. Incline thy ear unto me and save me. Be thou my strong habitation where unto I may continually resort. Thou hast given commandment to save me. The message translation says, Do what you do so well. Get me out of this mess. Up on my feet. Put your ear to the ground and listen. Give me space for salvation. Be a guest room. A guest room where I can retreat, not to your house. Why will Elijah go to Oreb? A guest room, the guest room where you can retreat, be connected with God, is the church of God. One of our pastors went for a night vigil. They came back from a night vigil. And they want to take a little rest in the sitting room, living room. And as they were resting, the pastor woke up after about an hour. And he said, dear, let's go and sleep on the bed. He tapped the lady. The lady was dead. They were coming from the church. When the, we began to help to strengthen his faith, I brought him to our prayer room here for nine days. The day he came, I locked him up. Only water in the prayer room. He came out of my prayer room after nine days. After that encounter, his life was never the same. You don't want to wait until you have problems. You don't. You don't. Life is full of problems. You want to have conscience that you are doing your best. If anything happens, then you have, I've done my best. Or you come to church, you, are, you think you are doing me a favor. You are not doing me no favor. The judgment day is coming. Then you will know that pastor is not the one you are giving favor. You are giving favor. He will, he will be talking about money now. I came here one day. I was talking about no member that sent us 10,000. There was somebody sitting behind. He said, why would pastor be telling all, all this? Is that, a, is that not madness? I didn't say you should give more. I'm giving testimony that somebody gave us 10,000. And you are getting angry at that. Are you not demo incarnate? Uh, pastor will just be telling us all this. Ah. The person was passing by and he had the lady complaining. Say, Pastor, I said, the, the lady is mad. It's one of those planted in the house of God who their brain has been distorted. If your brain is not distorted, I'm giving a testimony that somebody gave a church 10,000 and you are getting angry. When you're supposed to be happy, ah, God, this is an encouragement. To, we too should try and contribute to this great job. One of my brother, ushers, he has not come to church for a long time. So he came one day, saw all the beauty. He saw a new screen, saw a new this. He said, Pastor, Pastor, come, come, come. Ah! Look, I entered the church now. God, you guys are spending a lot of money. Just issue a check. I, I cannot remember how much check. 2,000. Just issue a check of 2,000. Say, ah, God, goodness. God, I can't allow this to go without being part of this. And you come. You see cushion chair. The day AC is not working, you are the first that will complain. That's why we are talking about Nigerian churches. Their AC is not working now. And God is listening to you, your own father's house. If the AC is not working in your, in your father's house in Africa, won't you send money to repair it? Truth is bitter. 
And I've been warned. You can see my look. I have a new look. Don't look at their face. Tell them the truth. So that you will be saved from their blood if they die in their sin. The church is not man's idea. Okay, before I round up, are you, are you through with the video? So that we just slot the video in and then I will round up. Are you sleeping again? Question. What are, what are you called, called to do? Can you off the lights? So I ask that, that question, question because we won't be judged according, according to what we did in life, but rather, rather what, what we were called to do in life. Imagine, Imagine with me standing before the throne of God and a scenario like, like this occurred. Evangelist Anderson, come, come forth and give an account, account of your stewardship on earth. Seven hundred fifty-one thousand three hundred and twenty-one souls. If you would have sought me, I would have revealed this to you. Sister Smith, come forth and give an account of your stewardship. Judge according to what you did. I'm a nurse. I'm a doctor. I'm a, an engineer. 
you will be judged according to what you were called to do. And you can only discover that when you come to the presence of God to seek him adequately and appropriately. So as I round up, the church is not man's idea. The church is an escape route for the guilty in unrighteousness to come for refuge. For those suffering and living in condemnation to come for refuge. Those who are being messed up with challenges of life can come for refuge. Those that need healings, breakthrough, protection, and other blessings could get to the church for refuge. It is not God wishes to embark on this journey of faith on your own terms. You can certainly learn a lot by reading books, watching sermons online, but God's art is for you to be part of a community of faith. Why do God want you to be the part of physical community of faith? Because Ephesians chapter 1, 22, 23, God says, God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church, not in your home, not for the benefit of your house. God has put all things under his authority and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. Not online. The church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ. The church is made full and complete by Christ. Who fills all things everywhere with himself. So Christ rules the church as the head over all things for the benefit of the church. Ephesians 1.21 Now he is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything not only in the world but also in the world to come so he's far above all this christ is seen here above sickness above powers above causes above cancer and the church is the body where this power is assigned primarily to be executed the church ephesians 2 22b says the church is christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. That's where he executes judgment over those who are messing up with you. The church is where God heals, where he delivers, where he changes destinies. So Christ's power, his authority, and his fullness are all found in the church, which becomes our city of refuge, where we can run to and find protection. Last warning. And then I will close. Christians thought it foolish to acknowledge God. Romans 1, 28 and verse 32, New Living Translation. Listen carefully, look at me. So, since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. He abandoned them. Look at it on the... Screen. Don't come to church on Wednesday. Don't go to house fellowship to build your children and your, and your family. Don't come to church on Sunday. He said he abandoned them. Their lives become full of every kind of wickedness. Because he has abandoned them. Full of sin, full of greed, hate, envy, murder. And so on and so on. So they refuse to understand verse 32. Break their promises. Heartless and have no mercy. They know God's justice required that those who do these things deserve to die. Yet they do, they do them anyway, worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. And lastly, Romans 9.22. What if God, willing to show his anger, to make his power known, endure with much long suffering, the vessel of wrath fitted for destruction? That's made me fear. It means you are careless. And God said, I will endure you. I don't come to church. I will endure you. Continue. I hate coming to church. I hate God people. I will talk bad about them. Continue. I will endure you because you have been fitted for destruction. You have been fitted to go to hell. And I will endure you until you, you end in hellfire. That scripture's fears, it made me fear every day. So God can be looking at you and say, Go ahead. Do whatever you are doing. Do it. Continue. Don't come to church. Hate the church. Speak evil about the church. Condemn the church. I will endure you. You continue doing it. 
because you have been fitted for destruction. At the end of the day, I will meet with you at the day of judgment. I want you to bow down your heads.